Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to the Commanders. This is the 2.3 update for Elite Dangerous. Now the footage you're looking at here is from the recent live stream by Frontier where they showed off some of the new features for the update, specifically the multi-crew feature. Now multi-crew is of course the ability for friends to join you on board your ship or indeed for you to join other people on board their ship. And for many people this is the most anticipated update for the entire Horizon season. What I'm going to do here then is take a look at some of the new features that have been shown off. So first things first is the new comms panel. Immediately you can see two very different things here. The first being how messages are now blocked off and timestamped. And the other thing being that NPCs now have portraits. All portraits both from players as well as NPCs now show up in the comms panel here. And it's a nice touch. The blocking off of the text is also very handy because it does make these messages much clearer and a lot easier to read. Moving on to the new multi-crew tab then, which has been integrated with the friends list, you can see there's a lot of changes here. Right at the top there's an info panel and this tells you everything you need to know about multi-crew, how it all works and the various roles. And of course we already know what those roles are, helm, gunner and fighter. Moving on to the multi-crew functionality then, here you can see a matchmaking facility and this enables you to find a crew you can unlock your ship to invite other people on so that they can find you through matchmaking and you can choose what sort of activities you actually want bounty hunting, piracy, find a mentor as well as further play styles such as mining, exploration and smuggling all of this basically ensures that you can join up with the like-minded players and that you're not got conflicting interests you can also see here that each activity comes with its own rule set. So for example, the bounty hunting one here has a lawful rule set. And that means if anyone actually breaks the rule sets, they will be kicked out of the session. And again, this just ensures that you don't have other players coming along to wreck your particular activity or just to troll you. It also means that if you're heavily into PvP and piracy, you can also find like-minded players without any worries about that. Now, if people can join your ship from any distance and you can join other players' ships from any distance. It's all entirely instant, you don't need to be docked at a station, you can do it from anywhere within space. And this is all about ensuring that the activities and the interest is kept high and that you're not sat there waiting around for hours just to create a play session. There's also another new tab here, this is the history tab and it will show you all the crew members that have joined you or the ships that you've joined and the purpose of this is so that you can rejoin a player that you've played with previously and of course it's also a nice log of your play sessions. Now it does have some functionality here, if for example you choose a player you can remove them from history, you can send them a friend request, you can block the player, now that is much simpler now to block a player as it was to previously, you used to have to go to the main menu to do that. Now blocking a player previously just meant that you was blocked with them from comms, it didn't block them from sharing a session with you. No word on whether that's changed now, but I do assume that if you block a player they will be unable to join your ship in the future. Now one of the real big things about multi-crew of course is the ability to have avatars and have your avatar sent to another player's ship. So we saw a little bit of that in the previous stream and we see exactly how that works in terms of multi-crew right here. Now this avatar here is Sandro Samarco, it's the lead designer of Elite Dangerous and you can see in action some of the camera controls here. Very nice, you can pretty much get in up close and personal and I think we do see some rather nice zooms in just a moment. You can also hide the UI here so that would be perfect for video capture as well as making screenshots. Now over the back there you can see the other seats within the bridge and that is where the other players are going to join. Now when they do join they join in the form of a hologram, they're not physically there, they're simply broadcasting themselves from wherever their current location is and you'll see them materialize right here. Now the idea behind this in principle of course is to keep up the pace as I mentioned previously. However I do say in principle because it's highly dependent on network and during the stream they did have a few networking issues or at least some gameplay issues, maybe a coding issue, who knows. But one of the developers were actually kicked out numerous times meaning that the players had to wait around whilst he tried to rejoin. 
Now do keep in mind that of course this is pre-beta code so problems are to be expected and there's bound to be a hitch or two during the beta itself but hopefully all this will be resolved by the time the patch actually hits the live servers. That said Elite is quite widely known of course for having networking and instancing problems and these particularly manifest themselves when trying to set up wings or multiplayer sessions. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not that can hold up during a multi-crew sessions here. So each player on board the ship has a full access to multiple menus. Many of the menus are the same menus you'd get normally and a few of them are different like this summary menu right here. This gives you a brief summary of exactly what is going on on board your ship, what sort of play session you're in as well as some very basic stats of the ship itself. You can also see on this info screen that the ship has a name, the Rancorous Bison. Yes, Frontier confirmed that ship naming will be present in patch 2.3, but they haven't talked about yet exactly how that is going to work. From your co-pilot seat here, you get an overview of the ship on your HUD, and you also get to control some PIP management. Basically, you get one additional PIP, and you can move that additional PIP between the system, engines, and weapons. The ship's pilot, the owner of the ship of course, retains entirely full control over the ship and they get the full control over power distribution as well as everything else they normally control. So the additional player here only gets to move the single additional pip about. But of course that is a relatively powerful feature and could dramatically alter the flow of combat. And of course you can tab here and change the HUD to a radar, giving you an overview of the situation around your ship. From the transactions panel, you can get a session report. Now this is updated in real time and will tell you everything that you need to know. It also highlights rewards, both from combat as well as trading, and bounty vouchers, anything combat orientated in terms of reward, is given to each individual player. Now that's not shared, the reward isn't actually split. Everyone gets the exact copy of the same bounty. So if you get 100,000 credits for taking down that anaconda, each player on board the ship is going to get that same reward. Frontier then went on to confirm that this is also going to be extended to wings. So from 2.3 onwards, anyone in a wing who actually attacks a ship will get the entire value of that bounty when the ship is destroyed. Unfortunately though, this doesn't extend to mission rewards. Mission rewards only go to the owner of the ship itself. So there's no multi-crew missions as yet, but who knows, maybe that's something that will come in the future. But Frontier have said many times that's something that might well be a long way off. Bit of a shame because I think it puts a bit of a downer on the utility of multi-crew itself as for the moment it's very combat orientated. And that said, Frontier are clearly looking towards the future with the other playstyles there for the play sessions and they've even included turreted mining lasers so that players will be able to mine in multiplayer or mul mine in multi-crew rather. Again, we're here in one of the co-pilot seats and you can see you've got access to all your normal menus and you can have control over the fire groups. These are the fire groups I assume just for yourself as the role of the gunner. One rather fantastic additional change which has been made is the introduction of two new additional fire buttons. So previously we've only had two fire buttons, this adds the total up to four. And this is something I know people have been requesting for a very long time. Also you might note there that there is a data link scanner aboard your ship. Now Frontier didn't want to talk about that, That's, they've got nothing that they want to show off until later on, so I'm guessing we're going to have to wait and see for the beta itself to see what that's all about. Frontier did recommend that the additional fire buttons are reserved for utility mounts, but they can also be applied to weapons as well if you so want. So a few other bits of information here then. Uh, SRV doesn't currently work in multi-crew, that's something that may come later, although Frontier wouldn't confirm that one way or the other. And all crew members also have full control over their own camera suites. So whilst you're flying your ship, for example, someone else can be looking around and controlling and recording with their own camera. So the role of gunner then is entirely about controlling the turrets on your ship. So you will need a turret for this to work, and when you deploy the turret, you instantly get an external third-person view. You can see the UI elements here are very familiar and we'll talk about some of that in just a moment. But the idea here is that you get a full 360 degree view of your surroundings and the ship will slightly off center itself here so that you can see around your ship. And this means that you're about to fire in any direction. Assuming you've got turrets on that side of your ship, you can see on the UI there that some of the turrets switch red. And this basically means that that turret cannot see in the angle you're looking at. Now I know some people were quite surprised to see a third person combat view here 
and I can understand that. It's obviously against very much of what Frontier have said previously about ensuring that the game is first person only. However, for anyone who has ever played in a turret position on board another vehicle while someone else is piloting that vehicle, you'll know that turret control can be very difficult due to the unwieldy and sometimes unpredictable flight paths of the pilot. So this gets around that problem and enables you to use turrets on all sides of the ships. And I do know that quite a lot of people are expecting a Millennium Falcon type scene here where someone else is piloting the ship and you jump directly into that turret. However, when you consider how many turrets a single ship can have, I don't know how that would work without you actually switching between each turret. Now, all weapons and utility mounts will work for the gunner and they will fire in whatever direction the gunner is looking at. So missiles will fire backwards and you can indeed even select and scan ships that are behind you. And what's more, all crew members will see the results of these scans. When you've got a ship or an item targeted, other players in your ship will also be able to see what you've got selected. For example, you will see a hexagonal marker when a crew member's got a vehicle or a ship selected. And this basically means that a multi-crewed ship can have multiple targets selected at a single time. So regarding a multi-crewed ships and wings, you won't be able to have both of those going on at the same time. It's a case of an either or situation. So no wings of multi-crewed ships then. One other thing that's briefly worth mentioning is one of the developers apparently seemed to slip up and mention the hull repair limpets. Now, they're not going to be in any time soon and maybe not for patch 2.3, but it seems they could be coming at some point in the future. So we know what the helm roll is like, that's the roll we've always been using in our ship, the ability to control the ship, and we know what the gunner roll looks like. The other roll, of course, is for a crew member to deploy in a fighter. Now, you can either have a single crew member deploy into a fighter, or you can have a single crew member going out in a fighter with a second deployed fighter being controlled by an NPC. The other option is to have two fighters deployed, both being controlled by players and leaving the control of the ships in the hands of an NPC. Unfortunately, there's going to be no way for players to take control of the helm of someone else's ship. So again, a little bit of a disappointment, but I suppose that's understandable because, well, you never know what that person is going to do to your ship. That said, it's still very much an option I'd like to see. After all, as the owner of the ship, it should be your choice as to whether or not you want to put that in the hands of someone else. And indeed doing so would open up a whole load of other gameplay opportunities. So that pretty much sums up everything we know so far about multi-crew. Now I've got to say right off the bat, I'm very impressed and very pleased to see the instant joining functionality. And I also really like the matchmaking options there giving us the ability to choose between what sort of play sessions we actually desire in joining in on. Now, it seems to me that the third-person gunner mode here is going to be the aspect that players find the most controversy over. As I said earlier, Elite Dangerous has traditionally always been a first-person game, and that's something that many people really do enjoy about it. So it's going to be interesting to see the reaction to this. Personally, I do like what's been shown off here, although of course I'll have to wait till I get hands on to make any informed decision on that. And I really do feel that it shows off both the environments and the ships in an absolutely stunning way. That said, I do understand and can relate to the concerns about the third person camera, although to be honest, I don't really see how those can easily be addressed. So overall, I'm very, very impressed with what they showed off. However, I do have some disappointments, and those are not really with what was shown off in the patch, but rather what was absent from it. I would love to have seen some additional roles in multi-crew, things focused on exploration, things focused on trading, and other roles within the game. And I appreciate we've known all along, or we've known for quite a while at least, that that isn't what was going to be within the game, but it seems to me to be a bit of a missed opportunity to add additional depth into the world of Elite Dangerous. At any rate, I'm sure as with all the preceding patches, there's going to be a whole bunch of additional content that Frontier so far haven't revealed or talked about, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing all of that, as well as getting to grips with the multi-crew. So the beta for the Commanders, patch 2.3, is going live at some point next week, and of course I'll be bringing you a whole bunch of videos to go along with that. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.